Karnataka where a call for a ban on Muslim temple tra um, traders continues. Remember, this is not the first time we're coming across this call. There have been reports of such calls coming in since all the way back in March this year. We've seen multiple Hindu outfits mount pressure on various temple authorities. What they're trying to do is ban Muslim traders ahead of the annual temple fairs that take place across the state. Uh, specifically right now, though, for this story, we're focusing on Udipi. Uh, you've had traders and authorities in the area write letters to the Muzrai department to ban Muslim traders for the upcoming popular temple fairs. Uh, but again, as I told you earlier, this is not the first time that we're seeing such calls. Back in March, uh, you'd seen appeals for such calls right before the March May annual festivities that take place. Now I just want to check if we have a reporter connected with us already. Uh, my colleague Ritu is with us right now to bring us more details. Ritu, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Ritu, could you just explain to our audiences uh, this demand that's coming through that we're telling our audiences right now, A, would it's if it were actually implemented, would it be legal? And how would it be implemented? What? How do traders hope it will be implemented? Could you tell us more? The first point is that this is not something new that we're getting to see here in the Karnataka. As the Karnataka is heading into an assembly election, these incidents are actually coming into the light often now. But yes, earlier as well, we had seen this you kind know, of taking up a huge turn again from the coastal belt of the Karnataka itself, where in the Udupi itself we had seen a popular temple uh, where uh, there was again a call for the ban of the Muslim um, traders because what these Hindu outfits are actually alleging is that uh, the community which is involved in anti national activities and also has a plan of uh, you know coming up with a big conspiracy against the society must not be uh, permitted to do the, tra uh, do the trade uh, you know, during the temple fest. So now this is another incident that we're getting to hear from the Udupi district where the popular annual fairs are upcoming and uh, you know the two uh, specially popular uh, temple fairs that is uh, in the Udupi district itself, Koteshwara temple and also another uh, temple uh, uh, of uh, Durga Par Parmeshwara temple fair as well. One which is slated to be on the 8th and another one again after a couple of days itself. So that actually is a very big temple fair in the Udupi district. During, the t during this time we get to see a huge uh, public gathering as well and there is again a big scope for the uh, business too during uh, you know, this uh, festival uh, festivals in the district. So now ahead of uh, that popular temple fest, again there is a call that has been given to ban for the Muslim traders. But yes, we had seen earlier as well how the state government has went uh, of, uh, 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 went forward and also had supported uh, in some way saying that, this, that the state government in fact stands and defends uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know, step coming in from the Hindu outfits as well because what again the, uh, the rules also states as per this, the Karnataka state government is also that the Muslim traders or for that matter the other community members should not be allowed to do business during the temple for especially on the premises of the temple itself okay. so there is a ban on that so that had been the defense of the uh, state government but meanwhile you see the Hindu outfits are continuing in, and this kind of a chorus is actually growing here in the Karnataka ahead of the assembly elections okay but Ritu what I want to understand from you is when you take a look at Karnataka the history is so interrogate in, in integrated you have an example you have the Bapanadu temple for example that was built by a Muslim merchant uh, years ago, decades and decades ago. Temples like that, I know that this year that temple saw the banning of Muslim traders. When the community is so integrated, how is such a ban even being implemented? Very true, see that again. Uh, there's a hu uh, uh, too many aspects as well that we'll also try and have to uh, uh, try and look after it because one in the Karnataka that we're talking about, you see the state heading into an assembly election. These kind of incidents have actually become very normal, where Hindu outfits are actually uh, often coming out and saying that there should be a ban on the Muslim traders on the uh, temple premises because the community is often seen with the anti-national activities. Now you remember in this uh, in this particular incident as well, what the Hindu outfits are actually uh, saying is that there have been an incident that we have often reported of anti-national activities and the conspiracies actually being hashed against the temple itself. So, uh, thus this community should not be permitted to do uh, a trade on the right, temple premises Ritu, during Ritu, the I fair understand and from you, the how is the actual, trader should be given. An Ritu, I want to understand from you, how is the actual enforcing taking place, could you tell our audiences? When, when, because I know that such banning has already taken place in this past year, how was that enforced? What, what did the district officials practically actually do on the ground? 
there are a couple of challenges again here one one will have to uh, ensure that the law and order on the ground has been maintained and again what the state government also states also becomes an important point uh, during this point uh, in a, during this uh, uh, juncture so yes now the, the state government also going on to defend this kind of uh, steps and earlier as well we had seen Okay. the ban of the muslim traders on the temple premises there is again likely that that uh, a similar incident might, uh, will take place in the upcoming days as well during this temple el fais as well but what we again have to try and look after is that you see the uh, india was actually badly okay. affected during the covid time and we are still trying to recover from that bad moment that one had gone through economically as well so now this is again an opportunity for these small traders uh, to come out and do their business and somewhere Ritu, economically Ritu, just, try and manage Ritu, their life Ritu, i just want you to stay with us for a second in well we have sankit yanagi from the congress he is with us right now and i want to go over to him to understand more about the situation sir thank you for joining us sir i believe the congress and uh, its mlas have come out and argued that muslim vendors and traders are not only being prevented from setting up shop they're also illegally being kept out of the streets leading out to the temples could you tell us more there is no doubt that it is violating one's fundamental right to carry out trade and profession and it is also no doubt that it is politically motivated by the bjp and more so to gain its uh, uh, polarization of votes for the purpose of election and since the bjp has nothing to say about its development in the state of karnataka and has been involved in communal clashes or spreading the communal clashes or hatred and somehow it want to see that that the law and order in the state should not be in control and uh, there should be some agitation there should be some law and order problems why which they want to gain political okay uh, the, sankit sankit uh, can i very quickly ask really you because we do have a bjp spokesperson with us right now so i do want to ask you very quickly before we go over to them the bjp is alleged again and again that it was back in 2002 when the congress was in power that the leasing of land around temples was banned to non hindus is that accurate leasing of land is different allowing someone to carry out trade and profession is different there are some street hawkers like wherein the lease will not be granted to them they still carry out certain business small petty businesses like someone is selling the balloon someone is selling sure, sir but the bjp the could sir the bjp could easily argue that what they're doing is just another version of what your party did back in 2002 no 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 the main business like uh, selling of the puja items and all that will not be allocated and that was not the intention of the legislature to allocate it to some other community because it was a temple premises and that the tradition has to be followed however the small businesses like flower shop or flower, the one who is selling the flower or or uh, someone selling a garland something like that you see that these are something a small people who are carrying on such trade or the business or, or small petty people petty business and i don't know what is running in the mind of bjp still uh, even after covid 19 has severely affected our economy the bjp has not understood okay. the sensitivity of it sankit if you could just stay and with us because i i want to one second sankit i want to go over now to pramila nasargi from the bjp who's with us right now uh, ma'am thank you so much for joining us this morning here on cnn news 18 ma'am i want to understand from you we're talking of a state where you have temples that are centuries old some of which have been built by muslim leaders i'm talking for example of the bappa nadu temple we talked about it a few moments ago built 800 years ago by a muslim merchant now your party it seems and outfits uh, that are related to your party are calling for a ban of muslim traders in districts around it ma'am isn't these community and aren't these areas too integrated to ask for something like this Ma'am, integration of no. It's a question of the village. You see, a temple, a Kali temple, a Kafir and a religious Kafir. A person who goes near the temple, whether he offers flower or he buys flower. The person who sells also massage says that is what they say. But at no fair is not there. Are they allowing the our people to sell the goods in the Jamia market? So they let them show that whether they are giving permission to our people to enter and do the business. They don't even allow ladies. Ladies are also entitled to carry on the business. They don't even allow them. Then what? What are they talking? They must know that India is one, and it must be one for all, and the law must be one for the uh, for all. 